Good morning, good afternoon, wherever it is, wherever you are. It's me again, Jen. Hello! And I'm here with my dear friend, Taylor! Hello! <laughs> Whatever, Jen. I love Taylor. She balances me out. All of my chaotic energy, she is much more calm and cool and collected. Like the lover's card! We balance each other out. I see how I type that in? That's what's called a segue. Anyway. We are talking all month long about different lovers cards and hopefully I am bringing in more of my friends who I love very much to talk about the tarot decks that they love very much and the lovers card in them. So what deck do you have for us today? Today I have the Everyday Witch deck by um, Deborah Blake, artist Elizabeth Alba and well this is the lover's card. Yes. Show them the back because I really love the back of these cards. They're so fun. Cats. Yes. Cats and brooms and witch hats and stars and it's just really fun. The one thing is that I've noticed with most of your decks, Taylor, is that the backs do tell you like this is going to be an inverted card. So you kind of get a warning before you <laughs> turn the card over that, hey, this is going to be an inverted card. It's, it's almost a way to cheat, I feel like. Well, I mean... It, or a, a way to mentally prepare yourself. Yes, mentally prepare yourself. So, with this lover's card, what do you feel is represented in this? And do you do you feel like this card upholds the Rider Waite typical traditional meanings, or do you feel like it kind of went off the off the rails and off the books? Um, I think. Well, I think this deck overall is the most. Um, beginner friendly of the ones I own. Um, it has a lot of the images and a little bit of a twist. Um, what was your question? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like for this one, this one is a little bit more focused on the lovers means romance. Yeah. Thing. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Although this it is tries. interesting because I don't know. Both of these characters, I mean, one of them definitely looks very feminine, but the other one could be either or. I feel like it's an androgynous looking character in, also, on this side. Also, if you look yeah. closely, the cat's tails are linked in. It's a heart. Oh, I didn't even notice that. That's super cute. I'm looking yeah. at her little book that it came with. This is Because, again, this is another deck that came with, like, a huge book. So what drew you to this deck? Um... I think it was just like the well the cats and the uh, witchcraft thing, but this was the first deck I ever bought, and that was what a year or two ago. So I'm not quite sure what my feelings all the time, but probably just um, the art itself. And I think at the time um, some of the YouTubers I followed had this deck, oh. which got me interested in it. So uh, yeah, I think that was. I like that that yeah. you just like drawn to it mm -hmm. I like too that on this one there's the the spooky higher entity is in the smoke it's like they summoned this being I don't, don't know how well it shows up on the screen but there's eyes up in there yeah you can see the eyes yeah and for you did you notice that when you first got the deck or did you kind of have to look for that component I think I kind of looked for that component but yeah I think it's pretty cool I think it is true to the rider weight yeah but like my other um wizards deck still has its own style yeah i i do like that it it does it has it also has like on his cloak i'm gonna say his because it's yeah. hard to tell but on the cloak of our character he's a little more androgynous looking it does look like it's on fire it so it keeps again to that energy of like you're next to the burning tree and then the other one has the apples and the tree of knowledge and that so she's wearing the red striped tights and he's kind of got the more earth colored green although she's wearing a green tunic I don't know this card is like tricky because it feels like it has some of the original meanings in it and the original imagery and then it's sort of like well no not really I think that's what I was going for because I was trying to um, other than having like polarizing um, elements, masculine, feminine, and stuff like that, I think it was just trying to blend to show that it can be kind of both. Yeah, and I like that about this deck. Although I will say, if you are a new reader and you don't notice this uh, entity up in here that they've kind of summoned, there is a feeling that it's just about 
the coupledom and, yeah. and romance and that kind of thing. The other thing I find interesting, and this is where I get deep on what I see in the card, she is looking at the entity in the bonfire. You can definitely see her face is turned in such a way that it's facing it, whereas you can't tell which way he's looking. He could be looking down. He could be, he's clearly not looking at her, but other than that, you can't see his face. So I'm wondering if that was an intentional thing as well. Also, she's kind of got the black cat, the shadow self, the illusion mm -hmm. side, and he has the cat that's kind of more modeled. And I don't know, I guess in a way kind of looks more earthly. Yeah. Imperfect, shall we say. Because that is the the earthly energy is mm -hmm. our imperfect side. It's our more natural side, all of that kind of stuff. So I like all of that. Also, I like that it's got all you need is love is the quote on there. Mm -hmm. So I like that. Also, maybe, you know, the power of love. I don't know. Now I'm talking on my butt. Anyway, thank you, Taylor, for sharing this card with us and all the other cards that you have shared with us this month. If you choose to share even more with us, I won't say no. I know you've got some really interesting decks that you haven't even brought over for me to look at yet. She's like, I don't really. I, I'm going to deny my obsession. All right. Anyway, thank you again, Taylor. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. Bye.